Hi, I'm Wade Harvey, and today I wanted to take a moment to talk about the two core differences between the development environment on the one hand and production on the other hand. Uh, because when there's a difference between these two environments, uh, we uh, can get some unexpected results. So it needs to, we need to have a clear picture in our minds of what's going on on the development side and we need to have another clear picture of what's going on in the production side. Now we need a web server in general. Uh, uh, most people uh, know this to, uh, for ASP.NET pages, uh, for authentication to occur, for the pay, uh, server code to be built, and for uh, the pay, uh, 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 server code to execute, and for the page to be built and uh, return to the uh, client machine. So we have these two environments. On the one hand, we have uh, the development environment. And th this is uh, ASP.NET development server is built right into uh, uh, Visual Studio. So when you're debugging or not debugging, executing from Visual Studio, you're using the ASP.NET development server. OK, uh, when you're uh, uh, deployed your application to production, you're usually using IIS, Internet Information Services. So the first core difference between these two environments has to do with the security context. Uh, when you're in development, on this side, uh, it uh, grabs the security context, the application, the web application when it's executing, uh, has the security context of the person that's logged in. When you logged into your computer, and this makes sense, you're the developer, uh, you're in a development environment, it should have your security rights. Uh, so that makes good sense. And uh, when you're in production, this also makes sense uh, that it, it should not be you that's uh, got getting security rights from you because a lot of people won't be logged into your uh, web application in production. So it has kind of a generic uh, security context and in most uh, hosting environments it's a network uh, machine account uh, which is typically called IUSR machine name. So uh, we need to keep this uh, separate in our mind in development where we have the rights of ourself, or if we log in as admin, those are the kind of rights uh, to the files that we can access in a root directory. And when we're in production, it's going to be a generic thing we're called IUSR whatever. So we got those straight in our mind. Uh, but uh, what will happen is we get our uh, web application working fine in uh, development, and then we move it over to production. And all of a sudden, we can't, if we're doing uh, system IO uh, text writer to write things into uh, folders on our root directory, it's not going to work unless we first need to uh, go into those folders and grant write access to IUSR uh, machine name or web server name. Now, another problem that we can run into in uh, production is uh, if we're trying to write to the event log, uh, Windows event log, or to the registry, the Windows registry, that's not going to work because uh, the hosting companies are not going to want us uh, writing to their Windows event log and so forth. And so we won't have the right security context to do that. So it's best not to do it. Okay. Now the second core difference between these two environments has to do with accessing static pages. Both uh, core differences deal with security. Uh, the first one was, uh, was was the context, and this one has to do with static pages. And static pages are just pages that don't contain server code. They're zip files, PDFs, CSS, HTML, so forth. Now, when we're in the development environment, over here, when we're in the, our development environment over here, uh, everything uh, operates as we ex expect. Everything goes through an ASP.NET runtime uh, 
uh, requests for all all pages go through this ASP.NET runtime, uh, and so they're authenticated. If, if we're authenticated, and we have uh, uh, these uh, static pages in a folder, uh, and uh, we're using Web Forms authentication, and we've uh, got that folder secure, uh, we can't. Uh, if we're not logged in, we can't get to them. But if we are, we can't. Okay, on the production side, it, it acts a little strange, in my mind, at least uh, on the production side. Uh, if it's a static page, uh, it, uh, only the only thing that's going through the ASP.NET runtime where authentication occurs uh, are ASP.NET pages, so only ASPX extension type pages go through the runtime. So if somebody wants to get to a static page and they know the URL in production, they can go right to it by entering that URL in the address bar and press enter and they'll get right in uh, because those pages aren't going through the runtime. So this is a problem in production. We think that uh, we'll, we'll think we've got everything secure, we've got the folder secure, we're using web forms to authenticate. And then all of a sudden, well, uh, people are able to get in. So there's two workarounds for this. And uh, one is if you use an IIS 7, uh, you, you can use an integrated pipeline uh, to uh, make sure that everything goes through the ASP.NET uh, runtime. Uh, but uh, if you're not using IIS 7, use an IIS 6, then uh, one option would be to uh, put uh, create an ASP.NET page and put the links to your static files on that ASP.NET page and then put the ASP.NET page in a secure folder. And that way they can only get to the uh, ASP.NET page by uh, going uh, uh, through the uh, web forms authentication and then once they get there they can click on the links to get to the static files. So those are the two core differences, and I think it's important to learn as much as we can about uh, both types of servers, the development server and IIS, and try to keep them separated in our minds so that we know uh, what the difference is to reduce confusion. Thank you.